Creating engaging solo experience live events in your game offers a unique way for players to earn rewards through personal achievement. Unlike tournament based live events, these solo events focus on individual participation, where the more players engage, the more they're rewarded. With Hero, our game development kit, we provide all the necessary tools to help you bring these events to life in your game with ease. In this video, I'll guide you through the process of creating a solo live event where players can complete a number of stages and receive lucrative rewards for their efforts. I'll cover how to configure the live event using Hero's achievement system, how to track player progress, display the live event in your game's UI, as well as how to distribute rewards to your players. So let's get started on enhancing your game with a rewarding, individual player focused solo live event. Let's start by taking a look at our server runtime code here. This is our main.go file and it's our initialization point for our Nakama server runtime code as well as where we'll initialize Hero. We'll start by pulling out the environment variables here and you can see we're using this to grab our Hero license key. This is all configured within our local.yaml file. We're then specifying the path to the Hero binary and we're initializing the Hero system here with the hero.init function. We're passing in the binary path as well as our hero license key. And then we're initializing hero with three systems. We're calling the with achievement system, with economy system, and with inventory system. For each of these systems, we're gonna pass in a path to the base configuration JSON file. This is just a JSON configuration file that specifies how that system should function by default. And then we're passing in true for the register property. This means that all of the RPCs for that particular system will be registered within Nakama and then be available to call from our client. Coming over to our base achievements JSON file now, you can see that I've specified a super adventure event achievement within this JSON configuration file. I've given it a name, a description. I've specified that it will be automatically claimed whenever it's complete. It's not going to reset by default. And it's also part of the super adventure event category. Now it has a count property of zero, which means it will start with zero contribution for the user. And it's got a duration of 432,000 seconds, which equates to one week. It's got a max count of one, which means once the user has contributed one to this achievement, it is considered complete. And it has a precondition ID here. Now preconditions allow you to specify whether or not there are any other achievements within the game that must be considered complete before this achievement is complete itself. Now you can see here that we've specified the super adventure event stage five as our precondition ID, which means the user must complete this achievement before the overall achievement can be considered complete. Next, we have our reset cron expression. This is just a standard cron expression that evaluates to Monday at midnight. And then we have the reward object here. Now this is currently empty. I haven't specified any reward for when the player completes the overall achievement. However, you could specify a reward object here so that when the player completes all five of the stages, they receive a special reward at the end. Next, we have a sub achievements property here. Now this is an object that contains multiple achievements. Again, same format as the achievement seen above, except this time these achievements are all grouped under this parent achievement itself. So what I've done here is I've configured multiple stage achievements. So you can see we've got stage one. The description is to earn a thousand points. It's not going to be automatically claimed. It's not going to automatically reset, but it is part of the same super adventure category that the parent achievement is. It's also got the same duration seconds and the same cron expression so that it's going to reset every week, just like the parent achievement. I've specified a max count of a thousand because we want the player to earn a thousand points in the game for this achievement to be completed. And then for the reward, we're going to guarantee that the player receives 100 coins. I've created multiple of these stages. You can see we've got stage two, which rewards 10 gems. We've got stage three, stage four, and stage five. Each of these stages has a precondition on the previous stage, which means that progress can't be contributed to the individual stage until its predecessor stage has been completed. Let's jump over to the client now and see how this looks in practice. So I've got my game screen here. And when I press play, what this is gonna do is it's gonna go away and it's gonna load all of the achievements from Nakama, from Hero. And we're gonna see this super adventure pop up here. We're gonna click on this and you can see that we've got all of our information such as the stages, what their descriptions are, 
what the count is and what the reward is for each stage. We've got all five of the stages that we configured in our JSON there. And if I use these buttons here to simulate the player earning points within the game, you can see that once I earn a thousand points, stage one becomes complete and I can claim it. Then if I simulate this again, you can see that I'm contributing progress towards stage two. Let's complete stage two there and you can see that I'm now earning 10 gems. You can also see that our stage counter at the top right is updating to show the player what stage they're currently at. Let's have a look at the code and see how this works. So our solo live event manager class is essentially just a mono behavior. We have some serialized fields here which link to the various UI components within our game. We're going to store a reference to the achievement system and the economy system and we're also going to store a reference to the event achievement once we've grabbed it. In our init async function here, we're going to use the get system extension method that comes with hero to grab a reference to the configured achievement system and the economy system. Then we're going to create a couple of system observers. These use C-sharp standard observability pattern to monitor changes for the achievement system and the economy system. And when any changes occur, we'll receive a callback to our achievement system changed and economy system change functions here. Once those observers have been created, we're going to await the achievement systems refresh async as well as the economy systems refresh async, which will grab the latest data from both systems from the server. In our on economy system changed callback here, we're going to get a reference to the system and we're going to use this to update two text properties in our UI, the coins display as well as the gems display. We're going to grab those values from the system's wallet. Inside of our on achievement system changed callback here, we're going to go and grab the latest available repeat achievements that belong to the super adventure event category. If we find the achievement, then we know that our live event is currently active. So we're going to cache that event variable. And then we're going to show the event button in the home screen. Inside of the event panel itself, we're going to clear out any of the currently existing stage objects. Then we're going to keep track of how many stages there currently are within the live event and how many the user has currently completed. We're going to use this information to power the little slider at the top right of the panel. Next, we're going to run through all of the sub achievements inside of that event parent achievement, and we're going to instantiate the stage UI elements on the screen. If the sub achievement has a value for the claim time set property, then we know that the user has completed that current stage. So we're going to increment the total completed sub achievements value there. Then we're going to update the stage slider at the top, which will show us how far the user has progressed through that live event. If there were no achievements come back from the super adventure event category, then we're simply going to clear out the event achievement value there, and we're going to disable the event pop-up panel. You'll see above that when we instantiated our stage object, we attached a listener to the stage claim clicked event. If we come down to our on stage claim clicked function here, you can see that we get a reference to the achievement ID as well as what reward text and the reward image to display. So we're going to use that achievement ID here to call out to the claim achievement async function within the achievement system itself to claim the reward for that particular achievement. Once we've done that, we're going to pop up the UI reward panel to show the user what they've received. And finally, we have a function here to simulate the player earning points within the game. Here we're going to grab the event achievement variable, iterate through all of its sub achievements, which are the various stages within the live event, and we're going to call the update achievement async function on the achievement system itself, passing in those various stage achievement IDs, as well as how much points we want to update those achievements by. And with that, we fully implemented a repeatable progression based solo live event that players can participate in every week to earn rewards. Our Hero Game Development Kit makes implementing complex meta gameplay systems, such as the one you've seen here, extremely quick and easy, with our configuration-driven and composable meta systems such as inventory, economy, energies, progression and more. We empower developers to add engaging gameplay features at breakneck speed, cutting development times by as much as 12 months. If you'd like to learn more about how Hero can help power your next game, head on over to heroiclabs.com hero where you'll find all the information you need to get started. If you have any questions, please reach out to us on our community forums at forum.heroiclabs.com. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.